Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're here to cut through the noise and give you the insights you need. Today, we're taking a close look at the XTC network. It's a blockchain project that, well, people are saying is quietly making some pretty significant moves. Yeah, that's right. And our mission today really is to unpack what's been happening. We'll look at a huge staking achievement they just hit. We'll also dig into the infrastructure they've been building and you know why XDC seems positioned to be a key player in uh, the future of global finance, especially when you think about institutions getting involved and um, tokenizing real world assets. Exactly. And here's the angle that really grabbed me. While everyone's eyes are glued to Bitcoin or Ethereum or maybe the latest meme coin, our sources are suggesting something. Well. Much more deliberate has been going on with XTC behind the scenes. This isn't about hype. It seems like this network has caught the attention of, you know, the real players. We're talking central banks, big institutions, intergovernmental agencies, the ones actually moving trillions. So we're going to try and uncover what they've been building while everyone else was uh, distracted. Let's dive in. Absolutely. And the first big thing, the, the headline really, is this major staking milestone for XDC. We're talking over $300 million worth of XDC now locked in staking. That puts it right up there. Top six proof of stake blockchains on coin market cap by staked value. That's that's serious commitment. $300 million. That is a substantial number. Can you... Uh, Break that down a bit. Where is all that XDC actually sitting? Sure. So if you look at the on-chain data, you see about 2.66 billion XDC. At, say, 0 0.092 a token, that's roughly 245 million U.S. dollars right there. And that's locked in their masternodes and the delegated staking pools. Okay. Masternodes, just quickly, those are the big players securing the network, right? Exactly. They stake a lot of XDC, 10 million currently, to validate transactions, secure things, have a say in governance. Then on top of that $245 million, you've got another, hmm, about 142 million XDC. Call it $13.1 million USD. That's tied up in various DeFi protocols and liquid staking options built on XDC. Okay, so that brings the on-chain total to what, around $258 million? Right around there, yeah, about $2.8 billion XDC. And then when you add in the staking programs offered by exchanges or through other wallets, it easily pushes the total value well over that $300 million figure. And it's not just the number. It really signals you know, a strong belief in the network's long-term security and stability. That level of commitment is definitely noteworthy. And what makes it even more interesting is the timing, right? How this aligns with recent regulatory developments. Can you connect those dots? Yeah, that's a really key point. The SEC, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, recently put out some guidance. They basically said that just running or participating in a proof-of-stake network doesn't automatically make it a securities transaction. Ah, okay, so that removes a big hurdle for institutions. A huge one. It significantly reduces that regulatory uncertainty that's held back a lot of big players. It gives them a sort of uh, clearer path, less perceived risk to engage with networks like XDC. And for XDC, which relies heavily on those master nodes for efficiency and governance, that clarity is, well, invaluable. Okay, so the regulatory green light helps bring in the big fish. But what about individuals? Why would someone lock up their XDC? Are the staking rewards good? Oh, they're definitely attractive. Stakingrewards.com estimates the APR, the annual percentage rate, at around 10%. 10%. That's pretty solid. It is. So for a masternode operator staking 10 million XDC, that's about $920,000 USD right now, they could potentially yield about 1 million XTC per year. Which translates to? Roughly $92,000 a year, or, you know, over $8,000 a month in passive income. Wow. Yeah. And if you don't have 10 million XDC or the technical setup, there's delegated staking. You can use various platforms to pool your XDC with others, contribute to a node, and earn your proportional share of those rewards. So it's accessible. Okay, so the financial incentives are there, the network is secured. But XDC seems to be about much more than just staking. It's really aiming to build, like you said, the infrastructure for a new way of doing finance. Let's talk about its architecture. It's described as a hybrid. What does that mean and why is it enterprise grade? Right. The hybrid architecture is fundamental. It cleverly blends the transparency you get with a public blockchain yeah. with the kind of controlled, permissioned environment that private enterprises need. So best of both worlds. Kind of, yeah. It's crucial for enterprise use because, look, big companies need control. They need privacy for sensitive data. This lets them keep certain transactions private, maybe within their own secure subnet, while still leveraging blockchain's benefits like uh, immutability or transparency when needed. That flexibility is non-negotiable for banks and regulated institutions. The control aspect makes sense. Now, mm -hmm. you mentioned its hybrid nature, but I keep hearing about its integration with R3 Corda. 
Why is that specific link such a big deal? Ah, uh, Corda. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting, strategically speaking. R3 Corda isn't just any blockchain. It's an enterprise platform specifically favored by like 300 plus global financial giants. Think JP Morgan, HSBC, Goldman Sachs. The big names. The biggest. And XDC didn't just integrate with Corda. It became the official settlement token for Corda's public blockchain bridge. Official settlement token. Yeah. So like the default currency for moving value. Essentially, yes. For regulated trade transactions happening across that bridge, XDC is the designated value layer. And remember, banks want control, privacy, compliance. Corda provides that. XDC slots into that ecosystem perfectly. It's, as our sources put it, invisible enough not to spook the traditional markets with crypto volatility, but powerful enough to plug directly into the core systems of global trade. It's a very calculated integration. Invisible enough to avoid public panic? That really paints a picture. It sounds like a deliberate strategy to build trust slowly. Okay, and there's ISO 2022. This sounds technical, but why is a messaging standard so important? And why does XDC's compliance matter so much? It sounds technical, but honestly, it's foundational. ISO 2022 is the new global language for financial messages. It's being adopted, actually, mandated by pretty much every major central bank payment system worldwide. SWIFT, Fedwire, Target2, they're all moving to it. So it's not just a trend, it's a requirement. Exactly. It's about richer data, better tracking, more automation, seamless interoperability. It's modernizing how money moves. Now, most crypto assets are nowhere near compliant. They'd need major workarounds, if possible at all. XDC, however, was built with ISO 2022 in mind from the start. It speaks this language natively. So no need for retrofitting or awkward patches. None. Either. It can integrate directly into these modernizing financial systems. It's part of a very small group think XRP, Stellar, Hedera that are positioned for this. It basically allows XTC to plug into the existing and future financial plumbing without friction. That's huge for adoption. It's fluent in the future of finance, essentially. Yeah. Hmm. OK, so the infrastructure is impressive. Yeah. Let's look at the problems it's actually solving. Starting with trade finance, there's talk of a massive five trillion dollar gap what is that yeah trade finance it's the underlying engine for almost everything we buy globally it powers nearly 90 percent of world trade over 20 trillion dollars a year huge but the system is incredibly creaky there's this estimated five trillion dollar gap meaning that much potential trade doesn't happen each year why what's stopping it it's systemic stuff, mountains of outdated paperwork, siloed data systems that don't talk to each other, slow settlement times, high risk of fraud, almost zero interoperability across borders. It's a mess. And organizations like the World Trade Organization, the WTO, and the International Chamber of Commerce, the ICC, they're constantly highlighting this as a major crisis holding back global growth. A $5 trillion bottleneck caused by paperwork and old tech. Wow. So how does XDC step in? What's its solution? XDC offers actual working solutions. It wasn't just adapted for this. It was largely built for trade finance. Mm. It uses smart contracts to automate processes. The gas fees are incredibly low, almost negligible. And settlement is near instant. We're talking two-second finality. Two seconds yeah. compared to days or weeks in the old system. Exactly. Think about the speed and reduced risk that offers. Plus, it's aligned with initiatives like the Trade Finance Distribution Initiative, or TFD, that's backed by the ICC and WTO, specifically aiming to digitize trade finance using blockchain. XTC fits right into that framework. It's deployed infrastructure, not just a white paper. That's a very tangible use case. Okay, let's switch gears slightly to another huge real-world asset, real estate. We're seeing projects like Riser using the XTC network What's the core problem Riser is tackling with real estate investment? Right. Real estate. Everyone sees it as, you know, a solid, secure investment, but it has major issues. It's incredibly expensive to get into. It's highly illiquid, hard to sell quickly if you need the cash. And the paperwork is just immense. So barriers to entry are high. Very high. The stats are pretty stark. It's something like 79% of people worldwide just don't have access to real estate as an investment class. And even people with money, 86% of potential investors, apparently don't want the hassle of long-term property loans. The whole process is slow and clunky. Okay, so how does Riser using XDC change that? What's the tokenization angle? Riser's whole idea is to simplify things using blockchain tokenization. They take a property, say a fancy suite in Dubai worth 2 million dirhams, and they essentially divide its ownership into thousands of digital tokens, maybe worth 5,000 dirhams each. This allows for fractional ownership. Suddenly, you don't need millions to invest, you can buy a small piece. Uh, democratizing access. Precisely, and the market potential is just 
enormous. You mentioned Dubai. They had days with 2 billion dirhams in residential sales, months with 63 billion. Globally, real world asset tokenization is seen as potentially a $100 trillion market. And places like Dubai offer good returns too. Maybe 10% rental yield, 8% appreciation on average. Riser taps into that. The numbers are mind boggling, but real estate means big money and trust is everything. How does Riser handle regulation and keep investors safe? That's absolutely critical, and Riser seems very focused on it. They know they need to build trust, especially bridging Web3 tech with traditional assets. So they have multiple layers. Strong principal regulation is one. They use secure escrow systems with established banks to hold funds safely. And rigorous KYC, know your customer verification for everyone involved. Okay, so they know who their investors are. Yes, and they share relevant data with regulatory bodies, like the Dubai Land Department, for example. They're actively working with regulators in places like Singapore, MAS, the UAE, India's gift city. It's about collaboration to ensure investor protection and build confidence. That collaborative approach seems key for long-term success. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking at XCC more broadly now, it's clearly building for the long haul. What about partnerships? Who are they working with to boost credibility and reach. They've built quite a network. There's SBI Group, the big Japanese financial conglomerate that gives them a strong foothold in Japan and Asia Pacific. Okay. Then you have players like Arcax and Securitize. These are really important because they bridge XDC to major asset managers. Think BlackRock, State Street, Fidelity, specifically for tokenizing real world assets on an institutional scale. So connecting to the really big money managers. Exactly. Plus partnerships with plug and play, the innovation platform and layer zero for cross chain communication, making it easier for XDC to interact with other blockchains. It's not just about who they partner with though. The network itself keeps evolving, doesn't it? Definitely. The narrative is that XDC is built for decades, not just crypto cycles. It's been live for six years, but in development for eight. That's a long time in this space. Right. They're showing up at major financial events too, like Cybos 2025, apparently handpicked by Swift to exhibit there. And they have an XDC 2.0 roadmap focused on boosting speed and security even further. It's about continuous improvement. And how easy is it for people or institutions around the world to actually use XDC? What about accessibility? We're working on that too. There's XDC.cash, which is launching fiat on and off ramps in over 100 countries. That makes getting in and out of XDC with regular money much easier. That's important for adoption. Very. Also, the Circle USDC bridge is expected to go live natively on XDC soon. That brings up a major trusted stablecoin directly into the ecosystem, boosting liquidity. And of course, it's listed on major global exchanges, Binance.us, KuCoin, Bitstamp, Gate.io. So it's widely available. Okay, so we've covered the tech, the partnerships, the use cases. Boiling it all down, what makes XDC really stand out in this incredibly crowded crypto space? What's its core differentiator? I think it comes down to a combination of things. First, the performance near zero transaction fees, and that super fast two second finality that's hard to beat. It's also energy efficient, which is increasingly important. Uh -huh. Then there's the trust factor. All 108 of its master nodes are KYC'd. They're known reputable entities running the core infrastructure. That adds a layer of accountability you don't often see. Right, not anonymous nodes. Exactly. And finally, maybe its origin story. XDC never took external venture capital money. It was built, they say, from the ground up, focused on its mission, not beholden to early investors looking for a quick flip. It suggests a different kind of long-term commitment. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive, the picture emerging is pretty clear. While a lot of the crypto buzz focuses on, let's say, speculation and trends, XTC has been quietly positioning itself as something different, as fundamental infrastructure. It's less about being the shiny new object and more about being the essential plumbing for solving huge real world financial problems, particularly in trade finance and asset tokenization. That's exactly it. You could call it a structural shift. XDC seems laser focused on providing the liquidity, the speed, and crucially the compliance that traditional finance needs to engage with blockchain technology. It's integrating with the existing system, enhancing it, rather than trying to burn it all down. It's enabling, not just disrupting. So if we leave our listeners with one thought, it really prompts the question, doesn't it? If the biggest, most impactful moves in finance might actually be happening quietly, methodically, within regulatory lines, solving these massive multi-trillion dollar inefficiencies, what does that tell you about where the real future of money is being built? Does lasting power come from viral hype? Or does it lie in these indispensable integrated systems designed for the long haul, designed for real utility? Something to think about.